in the surviving writings of Epicurus is contained in the Epicurus Reader, edited by Inward and Harrison, translated and edited by Inward and Harrison, and Introduction by Hutchinson, published by Hackett. We come now to the letter to Menoecius. That's uh, M-E-N-O-E-C-E-U-S. I'm just spelling, I'm just sounding out the spelling. I'm not sure if you can see that. I don't know if the camera will make that too blurry. Uh, it's possible that the original uh, Greek spelling uh, has a diphthong that I'm not supposed to pronounce uh, quite this way. But um, if it's a Greek diphthong I ever learned, actually I'd have to check the Greek spelling first and then think about the Greek diphthongs. But we're not here for pronunciation, we're here for philosophy. And in any case, if there is a Greek diphthong, <laughs> who knows if I ever learned it uh, in my, my studies of um, uh, New Testament Greek, which is somewhat different from this. This would be Attic Greek. Anyway... Epicurus to Menoecius, greetings. Let no one delay the study of philosophy while young, nor weary of it when old. For no one is either too young or too old for the health of the soul. Philosophy is about the health of the soul. That's what Socrates was after. That's what Epicurus is after. Uh, in this respect, at least, Socrates and Epicurus and Plato and Aristotle are 100% on the same page, as well as the Stoics. Everybody's on the same page from Socrates until... I don't know, roughly um, Descartes at the, at, the, at the earliest, some of the forerunners to Descartes, at least from Socrates to Aquinas in Western philosophy. All the major characters, if not all the characters in philosophy, agree. Philosophy is about the health of the soul. And to say that someone's too young or too old for philosophy, it's like saying someone's too young or too old for the health of the soul. He who says either that the time for philosophy has not yet come or that it has passed is like someone who says that the time for happiness has not yet come, or that it has passed. And the health of the soul and happiness are the same concern. Uh, you can't have happiness without a healthy soul, as Socrates would have said, as Socrates did say in the writings of Plato. This, again, is the whole point of philosophy from, uh, more or less, um, uh, Socrates to Aquinas. Uh, the entire pre-modern Western philosophical tradition, maybe some exceptions with some of the pre-Socratics who were mostly doing eth uh, metaphysics and not ethics, with some exceptions set aside Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, Epicurus, any other Epicureans, all the Stoics, Augustine, Boethius, Anselm, Aquinas, they're all pursuing happiness with their studies of philosophy. To say that the time for philosophy has passed or has not yet come is like saying that it's too late or too early for happiness. But we should never say that. Uh, it's the business of the human being to be happy. Uh, by having a healthy soul, um, to achieve which, to know how to achieve which, and to begin the process of achieving which is the point of philosophy. We could almost just stop there. That is what we're going for. But let's keep going, at least with a paragraph, maybe two. Therefore, both young and old must philosophize the latter, so that although old he may say young and good things owing to gratitude for what has occurred. The former, so that although young he too may be like an old man owing to his lack of fear of what is to come. Therefore, one must practice the things which produce happiness. One must practice the things which produce happiness. Um, I've never properly studied Jordan Peterson. It seems like that would be the sort of thing he would say. One must practice the things which produce happiness. But set, set aside Peterson. Um, this is the sort of thing you definitely get from ancient philosophers. In fact, before any, uh, any psychologist as such ever came along and said, uh, this, uh, this is how the human mind works, or this is how uh, the human person works, and this is how, uh, how a person sometimes functions properly or improperly. Actually, uh, Martin Seligman, uh, positive psychology with people like Martin Seligman, uh, is a major uh, contemporary psychology tradition uh, that covers the sort of thing. Practice, uh, one must practice the things which produce happiness. Martin Seligman would say that as well. But before any psychologist ever said that, we had the philosophers who were saying that. Philosophers invented psychology. Uh, in fact, the first psychology was philosophy, and it was maybe Plato's Republic. If not Plato's Republic, it was something before that. Uh, it was very old. And for a while, psychology, as it... Um, let me see if I can rephrase that. For a good long while, such psychology as was in existence was the philosophical therapy of people like the Epicureans and the Stoics who were giving accounts of how the human mind works 
and how it can be brought to a state, not neglecting the body, but an emphasis on the mind, on how the mind works and how the heart works. Don't separate heart from mind here. How the heart and mind work and how the human being can be brought to a state where the functioning of the heart and mind is such as to achieve happiness. Philosophical therapy, as described in excellent books like Martha Nussbaum's The Therapy of Desire and uh, Pierre Hadot's What is Ancient Philosophy. Philosophical therapy in traditions like the Epicureans and the Stoics was the practice of philosophy so as to achieve happiness by uh, reorganizing our lives and our thoughts and our desires in accordance with insight into the nature of reality and the nature of the human being. What did I say in the first video in this series? I probably said that from oh, roughly um, Plato to Aquinas, philosophy is about doing ethics in the light of metaphysics, doing ethics in the light of metaphysics, figuring out what is real and what is the nature of the human being. These are metaphysics questions. And in light of those insights about metaphysics, figuring out what is the good life for a human being in this reality we find ourselves in, what is morally right and how can we be happy, which are not separate or conflicting priorities. Maybe they're not even distinct priorities, so certainly not separate. Okay, so um, one must practice the things which produce happiness. Let's now finish that sentence. One must practice the things which produce happiness, since if that is present, we have everything, and if it is absent, we do everything in order to have it. Happiness is everything. Uh, we could skip... We could quit there and talk about the gods and death in the next video. I think that would be appropriate. I think we'll stop there and talk about the gods and death in the next video. Thanks for watching.